Good morning, good morning, good morning, everyone. Merry stupid clock to one and all. As you can see, it is 3.20 a.m. in the morning. Nobody should be awake right now. I do mean nobody. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I am your host, Tiffany Daniels. <coughs> Excuse me. And, folks, time for the usual disclaimers. So, first off, you are going to find the link to this train wreck garbage pile PR piece of trash report right there in the description box, along with the other actually pertinent links to the Stop the Shocks campaign, including Autistic Hoya's massive archive on the subject, also including the templates, sign your name, click on your senator, if you like, there's a link in there to take a look at some of the other templates as well. And the other present, change.org, shut the Judge Rotenberg Center down petition. Also, uh, folks, speaking of, when we are speaking about the JRC, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of, as well as catch clips from video surveillance footage of people with disabilities being tortured and abused. If you have young children present, please use your headphones. And, folks... Need I remind you, it's now officially 3.21 a.m. in the morning. I'm actually lucky I'm even halfway coherent. So, if I stumble over any of my words this morning, if I go off on an explicitive rant because of how much of PR smoke blowing up my ass report this is, my apologies in advance, all right? <clears throat> This is a very triggering subject on a lot of levels. Without all the horrible abuse going on, just the level of corruption this place has engaged in and what it has turned the state into Massachusetts into. <coughs> that is its own subject in and of itself. Yes, Mr. Mew, you may commentate. He's already finished. All right, so back to where we were yesterday, staff training. Summary of findings. Square your shoulders, folks. The stupid is going to be rather pertinent this morning. The training program at JRC has changed and improved in important ways as a result of the August 2007 incident. Oh, tell us, Judge. <coughs> How has it improved? New staff members now receive training on the exercise of good judgment and required to go through additional eight-hour training or probationary period prior to being able to administer GED applications and perform GED self-care. Oh, for fuck's sake! That's an improvement? So, instead of going the rational route and extending the training period, getting more extensive training on handling actual mental health crisis situations. Instead of getting more extensive training <clears throat> on how to deal with people with varying neurodevelopmental disabilities, you instead add an extra week of training on quote-unquote good judgment on when and to when not torture people and how to take care of your torture device properly. Really. Really. Additionally, all staff are required to be recertified every year in order to work with GED students. Oh, for the love of fuck. You are really certifying people in three weeks? <coughs> Folks, I'm not kidding. I looked into it back when I was more physically healthy. You come out here to this state that I live in. You have six months of training to become a medical assistant. And you have to be certified. Are you really telling me that in three weeks you get certified to work with not only medically fragile people, but mental health and neurodevelopmental? What? The actual, I thought the training for people with neuro, neurodevelopmental disabilities 
their case managers and their direct care staff. I thought it was lax here. Holy hell. Judge. Moving on. In discussion with JRC staff members, it is also apparent that despite the extensive training new staff received, you call that extensive? <coughs> you call that extensive? What planet are you on, Judge? It takes some time before staff members feel comfortable with JRC residents and the GED program. Really? Because I would never feel comfortable with it. Most people who live out here who've done medical assistant training and have done CI training would feel uncomfortable with it. Out here, they don't believe that it is necessary to punish someone for being disabled. Just, just saying. It is clear that a lack of understanding about JRC's treatment approach in the GED program contributed to the 2007 incident, particularly given the limited experience of the staff at the Stoughton residence that evening. Oh, no, Judge. Oh, no, 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 no. No. What happened that night is that the staff had a perfect understanding of the JRC treatment approach. Spare me your bullshit. Partic there appears to be very little, if any, contained in the basic training related to the types of behaviors typically addressed by the GED and why these behaviors are appropriate for treatment with the GED. Are you fucking kidding me? <coughs> Judge, my I'm going to be blunt with you. There's not a single behavior that it is okay to torture someone with a device that is three times, if not ten times, more powerful than a police stun gun. Okay? It is not okay. What is wrong with these people? It's not okay, Judge. Really? Would you use it on your own kid for misbehaving, Judge? That's what I would like to ask. I would like to line up these judges who court order this bullshit and ask them, would you use this on your neurotypical kids for having inappropriate behaviors? And if the answer is no, why the hell do you think it's okay to use it on a vulnerable population who have no way of escape. This, this treatment that the UN has declared torture. Additionally, the monitor has some concerns about whether the staff is required to complete any formal training related to having how to identify behaviors appropriate for the GED consequences. For fuck's sake, Judge, why do you think it's okay to freaking punish disabled people for existing? Why? I do not comprehend nor understand. If you don't think it's okay to spank a normal neurotypical child, why is it okay to torture disabled people? Because their mind works differently from yours. Why? While staff must complete the GED certification program, currently there appears to be no training provided to staff to help them understand what types of behaviors are typically consequated with the GED, what outcome is, and how to determine whether a client's behavior is appropriate for the GED. <clears throat> I beg to differ. Judge, I have seen the behavior sheets, okay? Right after 2011 when you put out this dumpster fire of a report. Really? Non-compliance? For stopping work longer than five seconds? For blinking? For doing this in front of my face? Really, Judge? For cursing? Really? 
Would you curse? Would you shock your children for cursing? It may be that staff relied on Dr. Isner for significant guidance in these areas in the past. Oh, good God. So you're totally behind his methods. But you're going to throw him under the bus. Okay. Well, staff are instructed that they may witness a behavior in order to administer aversive and are told that the DVR monitoring cannot instruct staff to administer aversives, then what, why the fuck are they there? That's my question, Judge. If DVR monitoring cannot tell a staff to pinpoint a behavior and shock the student for existing, why do they exist? Why all this camera footage? Why does every move the disabled person make must be monitored at all times? Why? I would like to know. The August 2007 incident itself in its entirety is not presented to trainees, nor is it used as a teaching scenario and basic training for new staff. Why not? It also appears that JRC employees are also not currently trained in when and how to contact local law enforcement. While mandated reporting to state agencies is thoroughly covered in both basic training and in-service training, situations in which law enforcement should be contacted are not reviewed with new or existing fact staff. In fact, they discourage calling the authorities. Judge, just in case you were wondering. Recommendations. Oh, dear God. A learning curve is expected in any job, and it's understandable that new employees may ha take some time to assimilate given the uniqueness of JRC. Really, Judge? I would walk out first day and run to my nearest local news station a fuck immediately with all the training materials along with me. <clears throat> and I do mean run, not walk. The school should insinuate, institute a mentor program for new staff. Oh, for fuck's sake. We're going to brainwash you. Oh, no, we brainwashed you before, but now we're going to just start at the onset. We're going to make you feel okay about hurting and torturing and abusing people people who are put in a completely powerless position whose autonomy and human rights are entirely stripped from them the minute their guardian signs off on this shit. After the initial three-week training, they still think the three-week training is okay, guys. New staff work on probationary status for three months or 36 shifts before they receive the additional eight-hour GED training. What the fuck? The fuck? During this period, new staff are exposed to the JRC clients and GED program and may benefit from being assigned to or paired up with an experienced staff member to help them emotionally and physically understand the demands of their new job. Oh, for fuck's sake, you mean... But they need this. You don't understand. We have to torture them. It's okay. I'll, I'll make it okay. I'll make it okay. You're going to understand. See, they're monsters. They're monsters, all of them. And they must be controlled. I guarantee you that's the shit they're throwing into their brains. It's Jim Jones shit on crack. All interviewed staff members reported feeling comfortable raising questions or concerns with supervisors, other employees, and administrative staff. However, it would be prudent for JRC to consider a mentor program for new employees who may not know what questions to ask and can rely on experienced staff member to help guide them through the difficulties associated with the position of mental health assistant in similar positions. For fuck's sake, judge. Ugh, 
I've said it again, i said it a thousand times. Three weeks is not long enough to throw in a newbie just graduated from high school who is barely a full-functioning adult themselves into mental health situations. Regardless of whether it's this torture center or any of the places that are out here in my state. What the hell is wrong with you? It is not long enough. Not near long enough. In any basic medical assistant training program out here in my state, you have to be in at least three months before they even start talking about clinical hours. Even in their pharmacy tech positions, their pharmacy tech programs out here, again, you have to be in at least a month and a half before they start considering you pursuing clinical hours. And that's a farm tech program. Moving on. And the fact that you think a mentoring program is going to cover it. No judge. A mentoring program is meant to brainwash the people coming in. Who react with horror at the monstrosity and the cruelty you show these people. And you are wanting to have a mentor to smooth their nerves and blow smoke up their ass and tell them it's okay. They're not really people. Right? It's desensitizing people. It's what it is. This type of mentoring system would not only provide a gradual way of transitioning new staff from training into work, but it also provide JRC greater insight into potential problems before they arise. You mean people that would blow the whistle on their asses? Mentors as experienced staff members would be in an ideal position to raise any issues with new staff or during the training program with JRC administration. They're going to whistleblow. This would provide another method by which the JRC would adhere, address issues before they impact the safety of the students. You mean the safety of your own PR. More in-depth training for the direct care staff should be developed that covers the purposes of the GED, the goals for the students on the GED, and what type of behaviors are appropriately addressed to the use of the GED. Oh yes, we can't have us, you know, being ourselves. Let's, let's shock that autism out of them. <laughs> you judge are a fucking monster. This will help orient new staff to the uniqueness of the JRC program and will assist them in identifying behaviors for use with the GED. Again, I say you are a monster, you are cruel, you are a fucking heartless human being. The types of behaviors that are addressed by the GED should be part of the basic training for direct care staff in order to ensure that there is no confusion on the part of the JRC employees who apply the GED. Gonna make sure you torture them right. Right. The JRC should consider all aspects of the August 2007 incident as a teaching scenario in the basic training program. The training department certainly addresses some aspects of what occurred in August 2007 in training. However, the full event in its entirety could be used as a scenario, an example of exactly what should not occur at the residences. The monitor understands that there may be privacy and other related issues that need to be considered for more extensive use of the blank details of August 2007 incident. But as much as the incident as can be appropriately be used in training, could be an invaluable tool. Staff supervisors, DVR monitoring staff, school supervisors, and overnight school supervisors should all receive training regarding what types of scenarios call for notifying local law enforcement and how to make those contacts. Ted Condon, the security consultant for JRC, could assist with the developing of this training, as well as input should be obtained from local law enforcement officials. For example, this training could be provided in the supervisor, DVR, and monitoring trainings. This could help reduce any fears of hesitation on the part of the JRC staff towards law enforcement, reinforce the relationship developed between JRC and local police, and would provide an additional layer of safety for the students at the residences. 
Okay, so folks, this judge, by trying to cover up the monstrosity, exposed the monstrosity. What do I mean by that? The judge is not just trying to assist in making new, fresh off the graduation stage, direct care staff who's been inappropriately and not nearly adequately enough trained to feel more comfortable with the torture and the horrendous things done in the name of treatment at this school. But through this report, he's trying to make you and me comfortable with it. He is using that high-handed appeal to authority to sit there and tell us that we don't understand what it is we see in those video clips, in those victim testimonies, in Cheryl McCollum's testimonies. We don't understand what it is that we are seeing with our own eyes. He wants us to believe that these folks are criminals that are in this school, that they're so severe that this is the only thing that works. He wants us to believe that this is a solution. He wants us to believe that it isn't torture, that it's necessary when it's not. It's not necessary at all. Not all these kids are criminals. Not all these kids are completely out of control. And you know what? Even the ones that are still don't deserve it. If you're not going to use it on pedophiles in jails throughout America because cruel and inhumane treatment, it's not okay to use it on disabled people or people with mental health issues. It's not okay. It's not okay. And no flowery language or medical jargon or whatever this judge is trying to throw at us to make us believe is going to make it okay. It's not. We are not misunderstanding what we see. It is the judge who for some reason has it built in his head that these people are the experts and I just have to go with what they say. No, question everything, question everything. You can't just believe what these people say. You can't because if you do, your kid too, might end up like Andre McCollins and the two gentlemen from the August 2007 incident. Okay? They can sit there and tell me they're experts all they want, but I am really good at sifting through the bullshit and seeing what's really there. And this report actually has two purposes. A, it's P. Are. It wants to use this judge as a means to say, yes, we fucked up. We brought an independent judge in to give us recommendations so we can fix it. It wants to give the facade that it's fixing the issues. Number two, it wants, us, wants to make us comfortable with this form of treatment. And convince us that it is necessary. It's all bullshit, folks. And it's bad for you. People's human rights are being violated. People are being tortured daily. People are being traumatized by these so-called behavioral lessons. But the judge says it's okay. And because he's the authority, we're supposed to trust him, right? even though it sounds batshit insane. Now, folks, peek behind the curtain. See what's really there. Not what this judge in this school wants you to see. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and close out for this morning. 
We don't get very many views on this channel, especially on this subject. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So folks, please don't forget to hit that like button. Hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time. And as always, we here at Smelling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.